Okay, hello everyone. My name is Govind and I welcome you all to my channel where I share content related to the data analytics and currently I'm also working as a data analyst. So in today's video, we are going to look at uh, two important uh, DEX best questions that has been asked in the Power BI interview questions and data analysis interview questions. So without further ado, let's get started. So before telling about the scenario or the DAX best question, I'm gonna make you familiar with the data model or I can say the f semantic model that I'm working with right now. So if I show you, it's a simple star schema where I'm having a cells fact table and this table is connected to the dimension tables. Uh, which you are uh, like you can see product reseller date customer sales territory these are my dimension tables and this is the major fact table so that's the simple star schema which is of course very common in power bi data modeling so let's get back to the report view okay so question number one is that so suppose like here you can see i am showing the data year and quarter wise in 2020 like in 2017 these are my quarter and the respective sales and how i am calculating sales let me tell you so it's nothing but the sum of sales amount column of the sales table and i am also showing one another measure or i can say calculation which is sales ytd so what does ytd means is that year to date so it means that it just uh, calculates the cumulative total for the current row so for example if in quarter 3 my sales was uh, this much then this plus like here this number is, is coming up by adding these uh, two values similarly if I look at here which is the starting of 2018 my quarter 1 sales was uh, this much so uh, the YTD would be this but when it comes to the second third row so it just uh, adds up the previous rows so this is nothing but the sales ytd but here the question was about related to the fixing incorrect totals in the table visuals so what do i mean by that if you look at here so it is rolling up the values correctly like if this value i uh, pick so this is the sum of this previous three values but at the total level if you can see just a minute yeah so at the total level it is not making sense right uh, to show up the 4289509 okay so before that uh, let me change the style i am gonna keep it tabular okay now it is more easy to understand so here at the total level if you can see so this is not the total of these two values right it's just the total of these two values and if i look at here so uh, this value is not the total of all these four values so that's why it is making confusion it is causing confusion and report users may be confused with such type of things so if you are uh, showing sales ytd then the total at the total level it's not making any sense to show it so that's why here we are uh, needed to uh, fix this issue so how can we do that i'm gonna tell you two ways to do this so if I show you my sales YTD measure so it's simple calculate the total sales and I'm using the dates YTD formula that calculates for me the rolling YTD sales right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna store this calculation in a variable called a and I will make use of return statement so whenever I am using a variable keyword so the return is the compulsory keyword that we should include in our DAX code so here I am gonna uh, give the condition if has one value and it is asking for the column so I am gonna provide the quarter column and why why I am, I am doing this I am gonna tell you that as well so this is the column that I am using in my visual so if has one value in my calendar then calculate the YTD which is the A variable so if I commit to this and show you so you can see at the total level I am not getting any values and this is what we wanted to do and how it is working 
so if i open up the formula and tell you so has one value what what does it do is that it checks in that particular column only one value is available so if uh, suppose i am in this row like this row so for the quarter in calendar column there is only a one value which is q12018 so this uh, condition gets evaluates to true and if this becomes true then calculate the total uh, sales vtd so it is uh, correctly showing this similarly here as well there is only a one value for the quarter column here as well here as well right but at the total level there are none, there are not a single value of the uh, quarter column at the total level it considers all the four value so that's why here the condition becomes false and we are not getting any kind of results right so this is how you can uh, solve this another way of doing this is that so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna comment out this okay there is one famous or i can say very important function index uh, that uh, is very useful when we are working with hierarchies uh, in table or matrix visual which is is in scope so how can you uh, use that so i'm gonna again use a condition if is in scope it also asks for the column name as a parameter i can provide the quarter in calendar the column that i am using in my visual if this column is in scope so what does it mean if you can see this column into the scope then only calculate the total sales for me otherwise don't do anything so you can see this formula also works very well at the total level you are not getting any kind of values so easy scope checks for the column that yes in this particular row my quarter column is in the scope here as well here as well because but here if like the formula gets evaluates for this particular cells so the quarter column is not in the scope here right it is not looking at the quarter column here it is looking at the total level that's why the condition becomes false and we are not getting any results so this is how you can uh, answer such kind of questions in your power bi or data analytics interview so yes now let's move back to uh, this another question so it's not kind of scenario based questions but it is the number like the business related question where we are asked to calculate the number of customers who have purchased with us in the last 60 days right so for that what we can do is that uh, i'm gonna create a slicer so i'm gonna make i'm i'm making use of date table because every time we include a time based slicers in our report so it always comes with uh, comes from the date or calendar table so year and also date right so this become my slicer so last 60 days means what from the selected date it should calculate for the last uh, 60 days so suppose mm, i'm here selecting uh 15 april 2021 so this is my last date and from this date we i need to uh like uh, move back 60 days ago i need to calculate the customer count right so how can we do that i'm going to go here and create a new measure okay so here i am naming a measure as customer count last 60 days okay so here i i can make use of calculate function because here i need to modify the filter context so i need to uh, make use of distinct count uh, function that will uh, calculate the distinct count number of the customers and here i can include the customer key from the sales table because th these are the customers who are purchasing us that's why i'm not taking uh, the customers from the customer table uh, that's why i'm taking it from the sales table and here what i can do i can make use of a one time intelligence functions which is dates in period so if i write here dates in period 
first parameter it is asking for the date so I can give the calendar date like the date column present in my date table start date is what is selected in the slicer so it will pick uh, like it will consider it as a max date that's why I'm gonna make use of a max function so this max of date would give me the 15 April and from this date I need to move back 60 days ago right so here I can make use of that number of intervals is of course minus 60 because I need to calculate the total number of customers for the last 60 days and my interval would be day so I close this and I close the calculate as well okay so we are not having any value for this spread let's change the slicer okay so here I am getting the value so suppose I am here selecting uh, yeah 28 February so what does it mean that if my current date or I can say latest date is 20 February 2019 so it is uh, giving me the count of the customers who have purchased with us from 1st of December to 28 February because if I go th 60 days back which is uh, almost uh, 3 months so it will consider the date range from 1st of December to 28 February right uh, this will make me uh, this will evaluates to the 60 days because 1st December then whole January and whole February so this is and this is a dynamic measure each time uh, I'll select something so my value will change so this is how you can answer this question in your DEX based scenario based interview questions so yes for now I have just covered up two questions if I get any kind of more relevant questions that can help you uh, land a job into the data analytics field or a power bi developer role so i'll make a video on that as well and if you are having any specific requirement so please do let me in the comment section i would be happy to uh, cover that in my upcoming videos and please subscribe to my channel and share it uh, with uh, others and like my video okay thank you so much i'll see you next video